Have you ever missed out on anything? You know, many years ago, I was in, in elementary school, many years ago, and I, I had a friend come to school, and in those days, the, the movie Star Wars had come out. So he had a Star Wars birthday party, and he came to school, and he got his Luke Skywalker action figure and his R2-D2 for birthday, and, and, I, and I was one of his good friends, and for some reason, I wasn't at the birthday party. My personality, I just walked up to him and said, hey, how come you didn't invite me to your birthday party? I know your friend anymore. Imagine little Steve. Oh, yeah, as teachers, I was a teacher's fun nightmare, I think, maybe. But anyway, he says, hey, where's, how come? and he says, well, you didn't invite me to, to yours six months earlier. I, I had forgotten, but back, I said, no, I have. I did, I did. He said, no, you didn't. <laughs> he was the one that didn't get invited. He remembers. And so I, I look, I thought, I thought, oh, my goodness. 12 of my friends come, but he missed out. 13, Matthew, oh, he was my friend, but somehow I forgot him. And here I was judging him and feeling a little bit put out and, and arrogant, coming to him, asking him, why didn't you invite me to your birthday? And I didn't realize that I'd forgotten him, but he didn't forget. <laughs> and Steve didn't get invited to the party. He wasn't like me. He just let it slide, and he didn't. But, he, but I didn't get invited. I missed out. I missed the opportunity, and it wasn't his fault. You know, so much to speak, it was, it was me. And I know a lot of times humans, we don't realize that we offend and hurt people because of our own perspective. We don't know that we don't know until my eyes opened, the penny dropped, and I realized I forgot my friend and he was hurt. Now we made it right and he came to my birthday the next year and then I came to his, it was all good. But we don't realize this. And a lot of times we can miss opportunities like going to a birthday party because we haven't had our eyes open or we've forgotten something and we haven't seen clearly. My God, now we're talking about there's an open door, there's an opportunity. We're talking about this year, the fact that God is good and he's laid good opportunities before us and we don't want to miss out. We want to go through the door. When someone opens a door for us, we want to go through. And so we're talking all this year about uh, receiving the opportunity that God has set before us. So here we're talking about enter in through God's open door. Revelation 3.8, Jesus was uh, speaking to John on the island of Patmos. He said, I've opened a door before you. No one can slam shut. When God opens a door, when God makes a way, no one can shut that door. I said at the beginning of the year, we just believe that, that God had some things in line for us. And one of them was the fact that one of the opportunities where he was, he was drawing people into his presence. And that if we'd come and worship, God would show up. And we started out, we did our first uh, worship encounter night. We, we spent an hour. Who was there? Who thought that was amazing? Oh my gosh, the presence of God was there. It was so exciting. People had got touched by God that hadn't had an experience for so many years. And they're like, this is amazing. People were coming up to me after that night and say, we should do this more often. We should do this again. So we did it again. We're doing it this March 8th, Wednesday night from 7 to 8. We're doing another worship encounter. I want to encourage you, don't miss out. Don't stop. I believe God's saying this year, if people will worship, he'll show up. And you watch all over the world. We're going to start seeing that in many different cases where people start to worship and God will show up. We believe that that's something that God started right at the beginning of this year. And we just want to focus this. And so there's many other things that he's trying to do in our lives. And we don't want to miss out. We want to enter in. So we need to be ready. We don't want to miss out. How do we get ready? Last week, we talked about focusing on God's goodness, focusing on some of the things he's speaking to us. This week, we want to talk about refocusing. Let's look again. Let's refocus, dial back in. Don't you know? So we look at this on, let's, what are we going to focus on? On the reality of, of God in our lives. Now, we talked about at the beginning, you know, church has changed. There's lights. There's different people up here in bright red today. I thought, who thought they looked good today? I took a video. Give them a cheer. They look so good when they're organized. And uh, such a great team. And so when we look at this, the, 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 we might have got more relevant and focused, but we haven't miss, missed the message that is spoken. Let's have a look at this. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 8, 4, verse 18. So we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. What Paul is speaking about there is we don't stay focused just on the natural things. Now, Christians can get weird if they're not careful because this, I'll read it again. It says, so we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. But some Christians read that. We love Christians. We do. We, look, we love believers. But if we don't read it in the original language, we just think don't look at natural stuff and don't even focus on natural things. Focus on spiritual. Then we get spooky. We're just all spiritual all day long. That doesn't say that when you read it in the original language. The original language says this. When it says, so we do not focus on, 
it, in the original Greek tense, it says we do not continually focus on habitually looking back again and again and again and getting our belief systems out of the natural things. That's what it means. That's the whole context of it. It says, so I'll say this in the original language. Don't keep back looking back at the problem. Imagine this is a problem. This might be cancer, this might be debt, this might be a bad relationship issue, this might be a boss that hates you, this might be an economical downturn in the society, this might be a big mountain of a problem. It says we don't keep going looking at the problem, getting so focused on the problem that we're going to think we're going to get a solution out of the problem. The problem won't give a solution. But what this Bible verse says, but on what is unseen, keep looking to the spiritual side of life, but still acknowledging there's a problem. Don't say, well, there's no problem. Well... (laughs) There is. <laughs> you can't deny that we have problems on planet Earth. Now it gets spooky. So there's a problem. So what do we do? Do we go to the, no, we go to the unseen. It says here, on what is unseen. So, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. It only, even if it lasts a billion years, that's nothing compared to eternity. Okay, eternity is forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, never, ever stops. This will corrode, rust, end up as dust. It'll return back to iron oxide, or whatever it is, iron oxide or whatever it is, and uh, it will rust. So it is not eternal. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen, God, is eternal. He never fades. He never changes. So as a believer, we look to him to address how do we act in the situation that's natural. How do I act in my marriage? If, If things aren't going right, How do I act so that it will go right? Do you know church, Bible, pastors, we're supposed to help marriages. And if we will listen and do what the wisdom says in the book of Proverbs and all the way, marriage will be amazing. You'll have the best sex life. You'll have the best relational life. You'll have the best communication. Men, we can communicate. Did you know that? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. I'm teasing. I'm joking. I'm joking. We'll be the best listeners. We'll actually listen. We won't zone them out. Okay, we'll we'll listen. I'm hearing. You know how you show you listen? You repeat a sentence every now and again. (laughs) Okay, you don't tune in for half a second and listen and then repeat that sentence. You listen and then you repeat. Uh, We'll just keep going. I'm teasing. I'm teasing us men because we need it. Now, we keep looking at the answers, the solutions. And so let's just keep. What do we look at in God? We look at his word. It's eternal. It never changes. That's why our message has never changed for 2,000 years. His character never changes. God good, devil bad. You ask a Satanist if there is no Satan, he'll laugh at you. You ask a Christian there is no God, they'll love you. (laughs) Might laugh at you too. But if you don't believe in heaven and hell, what hope have we got for the eternity? Um. There is an afterlife. And so we look at these things. And so God's character is love. It never changes. God's track record has never changed and will never change. He's he's not like a shadow that that shifts, the Bible says. It's like when the sun is in the middle of the sky, my shadow, shadow is very small. But as the sun goes down, I feel taller and taller. I love it in the afternoon because my shadow's about 10 feet long. I think Steve's getting taller. No, the shadow is shifted. God is not shifting shadows. God never changes. He's always the same. He's always loving. He's always consistent. He's not up one day and down. Dad, dad, I called him dad. My father, my God, dad has never had a bad hair day. Our hair doesn't go straight sometimes, but God is, he, he always gets up on the right side of the bed. He's always happy. He's always loving. He's always right. God is never wrong. So his word, his character, his track record are things we look at spiritually to see, to have a great marriage, to deal with problems in life. So refocus on those things, the spiritual things. We're refocusing so we can have a better life. So let's refocus on Jesus. Let's not not look at when we hear the word Jesus, get some religious weird thing. He is a historical figure. You study the Greek philosophers. You study the Roman historians, not Christians at all. And, and even in some of the Jewish guys, they, they're not Christians, they all acknowledge through the historical writings that he existed. And some of them have even written about the miracles. And then obviously the Bible talks about it as well. 
So what do we do about this Jesus? I was praying many years ago in my basement, worshipping, hanging out with God when I was living in Drayton Valley. And um, we lived in a house, and that, that basement, someone had been murdered in that house. And uh, no one wanted to buy it because it was very freaky, and there was some weird things going on in that house. And uh, we went in there, and we renovated it, and I went down in the basement, and I would pray every morning for about three hours, worshipping and praying and hanging out. And, and uh, there was no weird stuff in that house after that. It couldn't. It's like, oh, I'm getting out of here. Steve's here. <laughs> Not that, that weirdo. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Any demons or any weird spiritual whatever might have been there? I don't know. Have you ever seen the movie Poltergeist? I haven't. But <laughs> whatever was down there, it was scared of Steve. <laughs> Steve's a weirdo. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Well, he's too spiritual. <laughs> Not here. So that place was amazing. We ended up selling it and making some good money on it because when people wanted to buy it after that, they, it was attractive to people. And a lot of the houses we went into, there was, it was really actually really weird. One of them we went to buy, this woman was a witch and she had, she had some weird you know, animal figure in the thing and no one wanted to buy that house. We went in there and bought it and Steve went in the basement and prayed again. And worshiped. <laughs> what a great business plan. What a great business plan. <laughs> I just realized that. I never knew that. I just realized it now. What a crazy thing. And we ended up, we made God, made so much money through that. So funny. Oh, I'll get back on track here. I was worshipping one morning in, in that particular basement that was used to be possessed. And I was worshipping and I was in God's presence. I don't hear God in my ears, but in my heart, I get in my conscience. You know when you know something's right or wrong? In my conscience, I got this sense of God speaking to my heart. And, and literally felt this, this really strong impression, appeal to my grace. And what I got out of that was I started studying and going over that over years is when we come to pray to God, the, the quickest way to get your prayers answered is going to him through everything Jesus already did on the cross 2,000 years ago. We come to him, we just say, thank you for everything he's done. I'm right in your sight. I'm pure in your sight because of Jesus who sacrificed. And I thank you that my prayers are answered. When you pray like that and you appeal to his grace, his mercy and grace is unmerited favor. His mercy and grace is undeserved goodness. We don't deserve it, but we get it. When Jesus was put on the cross, he was under the curse. And, and, and we receive freedom and forgiveness because he received the curse and shame and suffering on our behalf. That's the good news. That's the story of the gospel. So 2 Timothy, Paul talks to him and says this. My, ch my child, find your source of strength, courage, in other words, faith, in the kindness of Christ Jesus. I just saw on uh, Facebook this week, uh, one of my friends has a grandson, and the grandson memorized the whole book of Matthew and, and quoted 28 chapters with only six little mistakes. My gosh, I think, oh, that's crazy. Your pastor hadn't done that. <laughs> I'll make a lot of mistakes maybe. I, I don't know. But this little kid. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he had faith. Memorizing the Bible doesn't mean you necessarily have faith. Faith is grown by focusing on the goodness of God, the mercy, the grace, the favor that we don't deserve that's given freely. And that's the trick. That's how to get prayers answered quick. My child, find your source of strength, courage, or faith in the kindness of Christ Jesus. That's how we come into the kingdom. That's how we go to heaven. By saying, I don't deserve it, but I thank you for it. I receive the free gift of mercy. And now that's how you grow up as a Christian. That's how you mature in your faith journey. And that's how, you, that's how this whole, by having that focus on Jesus. So I'm finished now. Dr. Carmen has some announcements. And then she's going to share how we can refocus our lives. I've just been talking for 15 minutes on refocusing our lives from the natural to the spiritual. God bless you guys. We're going to have a great life. Good morning, great church. As you're watching online, give us some hearts today. Let us know that you're connected to the family. We want to encourage you, if you're watching this on Facebook Live right now, to push the share button. Allow those that you're connected to to be able to link into this part of the message and be able to journey with us as we're going through an open door on this journey with God. And so we encourage you to share it. We're going to have our time of giving right now. And as you're watching online, you can text to give. Use the app to give. Of course, you can mail in your checks. If you're live today and you need an envelope for your giving, if you lift your hand, our hosts are going to bring that. And we're going to look just for a brief moment at the word of God about our giving as we give today. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 8, we've been studying together. 
But generous people plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. Today, we want to look at the definition of that word generous, and it's bountiful, giving or giving freely, unstingingly. Liberal suggests the open-handedness of the giver. And as I was looking at this, it says that generosity is about having an open hand as a giver. But, you know, also when we open our hand as a giver, the Bible also says that God blesses the work of our hand. So really our hand being open is to give, but our hand being open is also to receive God's blessing on the work of our hands. And so God didn't say he'd bless it if if you don't work, right? But he said, I'm going to bless the work of your hand, right? And so as we give today, we want to declare that his blessing is on the work of our hand, that as we go forward, whatever our hand touches, whatever we're working with, God's blessing is there for us as we continue to move forward. And so let's take a moment to pray over our giving today. Father, today we thank you that we get to grow in our generosity. And God, today we return the tithe. And as we do that, we thank you, God, that the windows of heaven are open over us in Jesus' name. God, as we give our offerings today, God, and we activate our generosity as we learn how to have an open hand and a generous heart, God, we thank you also that your blessing, your goodness, your favor is on us, God. And so, Father, today, by your word that you declared that you would bless the work of our hand, Somebody just hold your hands up in front of you. God, we thank you today that you will bless the work of our hand. And as your word declares, may you increase us more and more, us and our children. We thank you for it today as we give in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give today. So we're studying together about this journey. Turn to the person beside you say, we're on a journey We're on a journey, right? It's not just about a destination, getting to one spot. We're on a journey in this life. And God has said he's opened a door for us. And so today we get to talk about refocusing for the journey. Last week we talked about our focus and what it means to be a focused person or focused in the right direction. But, you know, how many know that sometimes we're not focused and we need to refocus? Maybe even in seven days. Since last Sunday, you, you have to refocus. And that's okay. And so we have to learn how do we refocus for this journey that God has us on. And I get to share a bit of that with you today. The first one is refocus on spiritual things. And that's what Pastor Steve was sharing in that first part about, you know, refocusing on spiritual things in our life. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 says, For we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, what is unseen is eternal. So it's allowing ourselves to refocus on the eternal things in life. And I am a spirit, I live in a body, and I have a soul, right? And so each one of us, we are a spirit on the inside of us. I want you to look at the person beside you, look them in the eyes and say, you have a nice looking spirit. Nice looking spirit, okay? You got a nice looking spirit. And so we are a spirit. We live in this body. We have a soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. But we are a spirit on the inside of us. There's a part of us that's going to live forever, right? And that's the good news. And so we are a spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 to 8 says, Focus the mind on the flesh and you'll die. But focus it on the spirit and you will have life and peace. There's something about when we refocus on spiritual things, when we refocus on eternity, how it brings us life, how it brings us peace, how it brings us confidence, because we know that that there that there is something after this lifetime, that there is eternity, that there is a heaven. And it goes on to say that those who are determined by the flesh can't please God. And so we've got to allow ourselves to be refocused on spiritual things and and recognize that spiritual things matter. And and I understand that, you know, there's so many things going on in life and so many things like trying to draw our attention all the time. But we have to refocus, choose to refocus on eternity and spiritual things. And we get that by looking at Jesus, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. It says, since we're surrounded by such, surrounded by all those who have gone before us, Let us drop every weight, every sin that clings to us and slackens our pace. And let us run with endurance the long race set before us. Now stay focused on Jesus, who designed and perfected our faith. He endured the cross and ignored the shame of death 
because he focused on the joy that was set before him. And now he was seated beside God on the throne, a place of honor. So we are called to focus on Jesus. But it says here, it says that Jesus focused on what was ahead of him. Even Jesus was focused, it said, on the joy that was set before him, that there was something greater that was coming, that there was a future ahead, that there was eternity, that, that, that spiritual things are real. And so as we focus on Jesus, it allows us to refocus on an aspect of our life that's often ignored, our spiritual life. And so as we focus on Jesus, it empowers us to fulfill the mission. You're on a mission. You're here for a reason. God has a plan for your life. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 says, set your mind and keep focused habitually. That means make it a habit. Turn to the person beside you and say, I know you have some habits. Come on. I know you got some habits, right? Habits can be good. Habits can be bad. That's true, right? This is talking about a good habit. It says set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above, on heavenly things, not on things on earth which only have temporal value. This is difficult for all of us where we, we all are on a journey to, to learn how to do this in a greater way in our life because it's, it's a battle because we're, we're, we're looking at everything that is natural. So we actually have to choose to refocus on things that are above. Second one this morning, where do we refocus for the journey? Is we refocus on his direction. Job eleven thirteen. If you will focus your intentions on his direction and open your hands and reach for him. If you will focus your intentions on his direction, that God has a plan for your life, that you're not a mistake, that, that you're not here by accident, that it's not, it's not just a, a whoopsie and that you ended up being alive at, in, in, this, in this time period. No, God has a plan and a direction for your life. And so if you'll focus on his direction, it will take you forward into that purpose. You have a unique personality for a reason. You have a skill set for a reason. You know, there's things that you're good at that everybody else is kind of envious of. They're like, you're just so good at that. You're so, it's so natural for you. God put all that together in the package of you for a reason. He has a purpose on your life. Proverbs 4, verse 23 to 27 says, keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. Avoid careless banter, white lies, and gossip. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sideshow distractions. Watch your step and the road will stretch out smooth before you. Neither look to the right or the left. There's so many things that try to distract us in life. Disappointments try to distract us. Other people's opinions try to distract us. The media tries to distract us. But, but there is a direction for your life. You, are, you have a purpose on your life. And if we will refocus on that purpose in our life, it will take us forward. I like how it says, the road will stretch out smooth before you. Number three, where should we refocus for the journey? Refocus on those that are around you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. And we should stop looking out for our own interests and instead focus on the people living and breathing around us. Turn to the person beside you and say, I'm breathing. I'm breathing. I'm breathing. I qualify. I'm breathing today, okay? I qualify. I'm breathing. And you never see somebody get to the end of their life and say, you know, I wish I would have this or that. They always are saying, like, I, I wish I would have recognized the people who are around me more. I wish I would have recognized the people who are living and breathing and, and, and invested in them. And a lot of times people say that even about their children or their spouse. I wish I had made a greater investment in the people around me. And so I love how it says we should stop looking out just for our own and instead focus on the people who are living, breathing around us. Take a big breath. I'm alive today, right? You're alive today. And so we even have the opportunity to focus on each other. Hebrews 12, 14 to 17. Work at getting along with each other and with God. We got to work at getting along with each other and we got to work at getting along at God. How many of would be honest enough to say you've ever been upset at God? Lift your hand. Who's ever been upset at God? 
Come on. You know, that, that's how the truth here. It's like, it's like we're get, getting along with each other. How many have been upset if you're married? How many have been upset at your spouse? If you didn't lift your hand, you are lying in church today. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. You might have been upset this morning, Sunday morning craziness, coming to church. You know, sometimes you have your biggest fights on Sunday morning, coming to church. You come to church anyway. You hear the word anyway. You praise God together, and you leave, up, you leave happy. You leave happy together. We're back in one accord. We're back in unity. We're back going strong again. So it says we're getting along with each other and with God. Otherwise, you'll never get so much as a glimpse of God. Make sure no one's left out of God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye out for the weeds of bitter discontent. It says keep your eyes open to make sure no bitterness gets in your heart. It says a thistle or two gone to seed can ruin a whole garden in no time. Watch out for the Esau syndrome. Trading away God's lifelong gift in order to satisfy a short-term appetite. You well know that Esau later regretted that impulsive act and wanted God's blessing, but by then it was too, too late, tears or no tears. And I was thinking about Esau and how he was so just in the moment of, I want what I want. Turn to the person beside you and say, I've occasionally been there. Come on, be, come on, be honest today. And he was, so like, I want what I want, and I don't care what it costs me. I'm going to get what I want, and I'm going to get it now. And what happened is that later he had the, the, the he, he regretted the trade-off, right? He's like, that's not really what I want. Has anyone ever found out what you thought you wanted wasn't really what you wanted? You know, you're like, <laughs> but you're like, ah, I thought I wanted that, but I didn't want that. But it says, you got to keep your eyes open. You got to refocus. And the definition of selfishness is simply this, focused on oneself. Turn to the person beside you and say, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Come on, I'm guilty. We're all guilty of, of selfishness. We're all on a journey growing. Like, I, I can't wave something over you today and then by, you walk out and you're never going to have another selfish moment. No, it's not, I wish I could. I wish I could wave it over myself, you know. But, but the thing is, we're on a journey. We're growing, and, and it's a journey of learning how to, how to get rid of selfishness in our life, how to get rid of that short-sighted appetite. And selfishness is short-sightedness. It's in the moment we think only about oneself, and it's the Esau syndrome, the short-term appetite that all of us have experienced. But as we refocus, as we refocus on other people, it helps us to move forward. Romans 12, 16 to 18 says, live in harmony with each other. Don't be arrogant, but associate with humble people. Do not think you are wiser than you really are. Say, ouch. Do not pay back anyone evil for evil. But focus your thoughts on what is right. We learned that last week. Focus your thoughts. Focus your thoughts. Focus your thoughts on what is right in the sight of all people. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with all people. It says as far as it depends on you, if possible. You know, you want to live at peace with people. You can't make them live at peace with you. How many have noticed that? But if it all, as much as it depends on you, you do your part to, to focus on other people. You do your part to live at peace with them. If they don't want to live at peace with you, there's nothing you can do. You can't control anybody else. You can't change anybody else. But I'm going to live at peace with you. I'm going to do my part. I love how it says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. And so we need to just allow ourselves to refocus on other people. Number four. Where do we refocus for the journey is refocus on the next step right in front of you. We all like to look way down the track. And, and it, it, if someone said today, you know, I can tell you exactly where your life's going to be at in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or 40 years or 50 years. Everybody's like, I want to know. I want to know. I want to I want to I want to know it's going to be way down there. And, and yet we're on this journey we're on this journey with God, and, and, and what we have to actually do is refocus on the next step. It, it, it's not so much about exactly what's down there. It's about what is the right next step for us in our life. And Proverbs 4, verse 24 to 26 says, Do away with any talk 
that twists and distorts the truth. Have nothing to do with verbal trickery. Keep your head up, your eyes straight ahead, so that your focus is fixed on what is in front of you. Take care that you don't stray from the straight path, the way of truth, and then you will safely reach the end of your road. It's more about the next step than it is about figuring out everything in the future. You know, I mean, and we want to figure out everything in the future, but it's, it's more about the next step in the right direction. And so we've got to refocus on what is this next step what's the one step that you're given and i believe the holy spirit will always show you your next step and we're not all going to get the same next step together but what's the next step that you're given you know it could be i'm going to read my bible i'm going to read a little bit of my bible every day that might be your next step you say really reading a little bit of the bible every day is going to change my life yes it's going to change your life you crack open that thing every day and, and go to a source that's greater than yourself. Go to a wisdom that's beyond your wisdom. You crack open it. I'm not saying you got to read it for, for three hours every day. I'm just saying if you just crack it open and, and digest a little bit of it, is it going to change your life? Yes, that might be your next step. Maybe your one step that you're given right now, you're focusing on the one step. Maybe it's to forgive somebody. Is forgiving someone really going to change my life? Yes, but it's so simple, simple to do, simple to not do. Is it going to change your life? Yes, it's really going to change your life. Maybe your next step is to get organized in a certain area of your life. Is that going to change your life? Yes, it could be to start a, a negativity fast where you just say, okay, for 30 days, just for 30 days, I'm not going to say anything negative. And, and you know, you tell the people closest to you, you, you tell your friend or you tell your spouse, you tell your small group, and you're like, okay, I just want you to help me. Help me for 30 days. I'm just not going to say anything negative for 30 days. That might be your next step to just be able to learn how to be positive, to learn how to advance in a positive atmosphere. I don't know what your next step is, but I do know that God will give you a next step. He will give you one. If you focus, if you refocus on what's my next step, you're not in comparison with anybody else. You're not in competition with anybody else. You know, we're on a journey. This is not a sprint. You just ask God, what is the next step for me? And the last one this morning is where do we refocus for the journey is we refocus on the future. God has opened a door for us into the future. We're, we're alive today. We're still breathing today. So if you woke up this morning with breath in your lungs, guess what? You have a future. You have a future. And God says it's a good future. And Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14 says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. So I'm going to focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what comes ahead. And again, there comes that eternity, all right with it, with eternity involved in that. So I focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward. We got to refocus again. And to focus and refocus on your future, you have to let go of the past. There's no way to, to move forward through an open door. There's no way to refocus on the future unless you let go of the past. Otherwise, the past just trips you up and it, it sets you on like a merry-go-round of life going around and around and around in circles. We have to let go of the past. So how do you let go of the past practically? You stop talking about the past. You stop letting it consume your thinking all the time. You stop going over and over it again with your words. You've got to choose. You've got to make your own choice to let go of the past. You've got to let go of whatever, whoever let you down. You've got to let it go so you can move into your future. You know, you've got to let go of the past. Maybe there was a promotion and you got passed over. You've got to let it go. You can't just keep reliving it over and over again. You've got to let go of the past so you can move forward into the future. You've got to let go of your regrets. How many have done something that you say, I can be honest enough to say, I, I regret that. You know, I wish I hadn't have done that. But, but if, if we're focused on the past and we're focused on 
what we wish we wouldn't have, what we wish, what we wish we wouldn't have done, or what we wish we would have did. We're we're contained. We've got to let go of those regrets so that we can move forward. We've got to let go of the past. It says, I'm focusing on one thing, letting go of the past, embracing the future. You've got to let go of the past, the opportunities that you missed. I wish I hadn't have missed that opportunity. I wish I hadn't have missed his birthday party. I wish it, whatever it might be for you, okay? But God says, the door is open. There's opportunities ahead of you. We can't live on the merry-go-round. I, I, I wish I wouldn't have missed these opportunities. God has fresh new opportunities in front of you. You've got to let go of the past of the mistakes you made. Because we've all made mistakes. You're in good company today. We've all made mistakes. We've got to let go of the mistakes we've made. We've got to let go of the mistakes that somebody else made. Maybe somebody else wronged you. Maybe somebody else, you know, dropped the ball. And we've got to let go of these things. If you stop thinking and talking about the past, you're empowered to focus and refocus on the future. And God has a good future in store for you. Come on, look at the person beside you say, he has a good future in store for you. I want to close with this verse today, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. We must focus on Jesus, the source and the goal of our faith. We've got to choose to refocus on the right things. We're not caught in a merry-go-round. We can choose to refocus on the right things and move forward step by step through this open door that God has in front of us. And that's what I want to pray for you for today. And so if you can close your eyes and bow your heads today as you're watching online, we're going to pray together as a community of faith right now. We encourage you to pray with us wherever you're viewing this, wherever you're listening to this, to be able to just stop and pause and pray out loud with us. And we just believe that as God is visiting us here and moving in us, he's going to touch you as you're viewing this as well. And so with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to ask two questions today. Number one. If you're in the place today, you say, I've never given my life to Jesus. Maybe you've heard about Jesus. You know that that Jesus is real, but you just never made it personal. You said, God, I want you in my life. I I need you in my life. Maybe you haven't thought about spiritual things for for a long time. And today you're like, okay, God, I, I need you in my life. Today is the day to do it. It's a great opportunity to do it. Or if you say, well, I gave my life to Jesus, but I've been distracted. I've had all these other things distracting me. And today I just need to come back and refocus on God, refocus on eternity, refocus on my relationship with him. Today is a great opportunity to do that as well. Second question that I want to ask today is if you're in the place that you say, there's something in my past that's been just keeping me on the merry-go-round of life. Maybe it's a regret. Maybe it's a missed opportunity. Maybe it's, you know, something that somebody else did or something that you did, whatever it is. But you know you've been captured in the past. And today you want to do that one thing. Let go of the past and focus on the future. I would love to pray with you. Either of those, you need to give your life to Jesus or rededicate it to him. Or two, you need to let go of something in the past and begin to refocus on the future with no one looking for a moment. If that's you, I want you to just give me a hand up. I want to know who I'm praying for today. Okay, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I want to encourage you. Put your hand on your heart today because we want to pray together today. I'd encourage you to speak these words nice and loud, nice and bold so the person sitting beside you doesn't feel like their voice is the only one they're hearing. We're going to pray this simple prayer together. And then when we're done, I want to pray over you. And so I invite you to repeat these words after me and say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it, but I receive it. I receive your goodness and your mercy over me. I thank you that you have a plan for my life and I choose you as the leader of my life, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to pray over you, Father, today, as people are taking this time to refocus. 
to refocus on eternity, to refocus on, on that one step that you've given them to do, God, to refocus on the future, God, to let go of the past. God, I thank you that you are with us right now. Your strength, your ability is with us today to be able to leave the past in the past. God, your strength, your ability is with us today to be able to forgive someone who's wronged us, to forgive ourselves. God, I thank you that your strength is here so that we can let go of the past and move forward into the future that you have for us. And so, God, I thank you right now for your strength, your mercy, your grace, your goodness, your ability, God on every single person. We reach out today. We receive your ability, God. And we thank you today. The past is in the past. And we focus on the future. We thank you for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Hey, thanks so much for joining us online today. We'd love to meet you. Come on out and say hi. Join us in service on Sundays at 9, 30, and 11 a.m. Or you can continue to watch online at 11, 12, 30, 2, and 4 p.m. This Wednesday, we will have small groups at 7 p.m. Mark down on your calendar, Wednesday, March the 8th. We're going to have another worship encounter night 2.0. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to have a great time. Come on, come on out. Check us out on Facebook at facebookchurch.ca. We hope you have an excellent week, and we'll see you again real soon. Take care.